Welcome to Weld.com. I'm in the non-destructive testing program this morning with Joe Klassen, our instructor, and we have a, an informational shot here that we took on one of our uh, plates or practice plates, and <clears throat> we've done some bin tests. We showed how to, how to pass a bin test, and we showed how to fail one. Today, we want to take care of a viewer comment of how do you repair undercut, which we have on this particular plate, but we also have some inclusions. So I want to look at this and we want to identify where the problem is and we want to go about this and, and dig this out, get rid of these inclusions, take care of the undercut, reshoot this and hopefully we'll have a, a clean shot. So Joe, tell me <clears throat> what this program's all about. I mean, I, I think it's so cool to have an NDT program right here with the welding program. I mean, we have benefited greatly by having this process and this capability to, to look at stuff with dye penetrants, uh, ultrasonics, x-ray, eddy current, and mag particle. Yep, we have, we have the five or six basic methods, depending on how you look at it. We have penetrant mag, ultrasonics, eddy current, radiography, and mag, that's correct. So putting all those together, basically, long story short, we can test insides, outsides of, of materials and tell you exactly what you want to know about a piece. Does not make any difference. So here Super. today we just have our RT shot. And in this RT shot, I just put some identifiers on there to give us direction in the weld. <clears throat> right now everything looks to be upside down just because of how, how we have it oriented on the screen, but that doesn't make us any difference when we're viewing it. Really what we're looking at when we view it is the differences in density based on how the root looks, the cap looks, and if there were any defects in there or discontinuities at this point, what they would actually look like on the screen. So if I blow this up just a little bit, just for identifier kind of purposes here, this very, very light area on the right hand side here shows us a, a root area or a cap area that's, that's relatively thicker than the rest. So of course you can see it right in here, the root's just a little bit thicker, but kind of beyond that we have some, some discontinuities or possibly inclusions that lay in the middle of that weld kind of towards the far side of the root. It's hard for us to judge right now whether those are tied exactly to the root or out in the middle of the weld somewhere. My guess is they're out in the middle of the weld. But just to kind of blow up on those just a little bit here, you can see kind of that darker image that appears right in the center of the box. That's a good way for us to tell density-wise on the film what a discontinuity would look like. So. So a dark area would indicate a void. A void. If it was case. if it was real round, we would say that it possibly be porosity. Right. Okay. Generally, the way we view these radiographs is, if it's a darker area, it is something less dense in the metal, meaning okay. there's less metal there. If it's something lighter, that means there's more metal there. So if you're doing TIG or you just happen to get your your MIG gun in the end of the weld pool, those are going to show up as a more dense, lighter color area in the weld. Okay. So as we kind of just scroll through here, you can see that there are several places along this well where these real dense areas occur. This, kind of on the outside here, it just almost looks like a V or a U. That's a good road map for us to kind of look at where we are inside of the weld. So if we, Looks like a restart. Yeah, if we prop this up right here, that right here where my mouse is, is, a, is kind of that U or V right here in this area. So that gives us a good place to tell us, okay, these defects that you're starting to see right to the left of that, of that U or V right there occur kind of right in this area. Embedded in the weld Those next to the toe. Correct. Okay. Correct. I, would, I would, you know, from experience, I would say that those are glass or silicon deposits and we need to go dig those out. And just, just to kind of pull those maybe in just a little bit better so we can see them, what I would do is looking through here, that's a pretty dark area, but you can also see it's starting to look a little grainy, but it's not perfectly round. And of course, neither is this guy. That one's elongated and uh, it's got some shape to it other than being round. Right, that's a, that's a very good way for us to look at and say, okay, it's not very round, it's gonna be something like a slag inclusion, maybe what we would call slag inclusion, but you guys might call by a different name at this point. <clears throat> so. What is, our, uh, what is our white dot over here? So since this is a CR system for radiography, what happens is we have a phosphor plate that we take these exposures on. And, and as these plates age, what occurs is the pixels 
that are inside of these phosphor, these phosphor grains, they just basically wear out. So what happens is inside of this box here, there's a laser that pulls the information off of the phosphor plate. Knowing that some of these pixels just die over time, that's a dead pixel. Okay. So interesting. You, you can see that there's a couple extras out here. They don't really have any shape to them like they would in a weld, okay, or or, or a di discontinuity from a weld. So I'm not concerned about that. And then of course, as we cruise through here, I don't have the identifier on here for my sensitivity anymore, but it was sitting directly in the center of this weld. And as I just kind of cruise through here to the left, I'm just looking. These happen to be right over the center of the right over the center of the root. More than likely, inner pass. Okay. And then you can also see the ripple pattern of the weld. That's in another identifying road map when we go make a repair. Wow. Same story. This would be a dead pixel or a set of pixels inside of, inside of that because you can tell there's nothing on the outside of the weld because that's outside of the cap True. to identify that. And then out here, we get very, to the very left edge. Of course, that's where we get into our tack area and some, some lack of fusion and some other things right okay. in there. In the old days when we were doing uh, production welds and code quality stuff on piping uh, or anything, the live x-ray film, if I need to go make this repair, how am I going to get, how am I going to map this out? What are you going to give me? You, you're going to come down and say, uh, you know, I'll be in there working away and, what up, yo? You say, I you got to repair I'm, here. What, I you know? say that. I might say, God, this world is terrible. <laughs> but, especially if it's yours. But anyway. <laughs> So what are you going to give me so that I could lay over this to map this out and let's say that it's just a, a half inch long area that I've got a, an inclusion in that you're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I can't pass this. You need to fix the undercut and you need to fix these three inclusions. What are you going to give me that I can lay over this to kind of map this out and mark it so I know where to start grinding? Like you said, in the old days with, with film, you could actually take the film out and lay it directly over the weld. <clears throat> These days with this CR system, what we have to do is we have to scale the, the page basically to give you a, a picture that is the same size as this weld. Okay. One of the nice things of the features with this, with this particular instrument is, I haven't done it yet, but just for, just for fun here, I could stretch out and say, if, if this were calibrated, which it's not, I could say this distance right here just happens to be three inches and I can give you a scale as to where these defects are exactly in this weld. You could come in here looking at the picture say okay they're exactly three inches from this particular right. road mark. That is a big road mark. And then, and then you can measure over and cut them out or grind them out from that point right there. Okay. Good and information. One of the nice things about a system like this is this is, of course, a digital system. Like I said before, it's computer radiography. So if you happen to be sitting in Houston or Massachusetts or wherever you're sitting, and I'm here x-raying this, and you go, man, I really need to know how this weld is turning out, I can, I can zip you over an email file in a JPEG of what this particular weld looks like because you have particular interest for it. Sweet. Very nice. So it uh, looks like we have a repair to make, and uh, Joe's going to give us a, a page here that we can lay over the top of this weld and we'll get our gloves on and do some surgery cut this out and re-weld it and then we'll reshoot it and we'll come back and compare Okay, I'm going slow on this right now. I'm trying to open up two things here. I'm trying to get rid of this undercut that we were gonna repair. That was a viewer comment of how to, how to repair that. So I've actually gone beyond what I'm looking for. And the, what I'm looking for is from the x-ray were some voids, some inclusions that were lined up next to the toe of the well down deep. And I'm trying to shave this off. I think I'm on top of one. You, you have to get the light just right. It's real easy to just grind right through them. But I'm trying to go a little at a time here and open these up so that we can get a good shot of them.
I don't know that I found one here. I'm kind of looking. It almost looks like I've gone through one of them, but I actually don't think I'm deep enough yet. I think I'm just starting to get on top of them here. I'm going a lot slower than I normally do, so let me keep grinding. Okay, I had ground down into this repair trying to find inclusions I may not have gotten in deep enough. There's one right there. It just exploded. I tried to open them up so the camera could see. I'm going to go back and wash this. There's another one right there. I'm going to go back and wash this in with TIG, about 160 amps. 332nd wire. Do a couple of fill passes here, bring this back up so I can put a MIG cap on it. A little disappointed that I didn't find these so that the camera could see them well enough. I know I opened up a couple of good voids and may have ground through them. There's another one. Hmm. Alrighty. Let's go do a regrind. Alright, here we go. I've got a fill pass in here and I know I went across a couple of good good size uh, voids in there. I switched over to an eighth inch wire. I'm still running 165 amps. Again, I'm just trying to bring this up and get into the sidewalls here a little bit so we can put a cover pass on with MIG. Okay, I'm gonna go buff this out and we'll do the we'll finish the weld with the gas metal arc welding process. I'm putting this last pass up in here after we made this repair. And I am purposely welding with about one volt too high versus my wire feed speed. I want to keep this nice and wet. So we were taking care of undercut. And we were taking care of a couple of inclusions. This is our plate that we made the repair on. We're getting ready to go see Mr. Klassen and have him reshoot it. We had an undercut situation up here and we had inclusions in here. I ground this, hopefully, to, I mean, I, I don't know if we can see them or not. I'm trying to stand above it and shave this off lightly so that you can find the voids. 
I saw him. I don't know if we picked him up on camera. I hope we did. But I did go back in when I thought I was deep enough and back into clean metal. I went in and TIG welded a couple of passes over it lightly. I saw a couple of explosions. Anytime I see that, that indicates a void to me. And hopefully we got those filled in and cleaned up. I did a couple of fill passes and then I did the cap with gas metal arc welding like the original weld was. I didn't do the best of my blending this in and got a little squirrely up here. I did leave two little marks up here on either side. Hopefully we'll pick those up. In any event, uh, I've seen repairs that kind of look like this in the field. As long as the weld's good, uh, we could dress this up and make it look better. But again, we're trying to, do, trying to demonstrate chasing out deep internal uh, voids that were left in there, discontinuities that were left inside the weld. So let's go see Mr. Klassen. We'll have this reshot. We'll bring it up on digital screen. Well, welcome back. We did a repair on a plate that we were, we were chasing some discontinuities here and I, I cut into it with a grinder. I'm, I don't know if it came out on film. I'm hoping that the little voids came out where we could see them. Uh, I saw them as I was over the top of them in the right light. They kind of turned a little blue. I could tell that they were voids, discontinuities, and then I went over and, and washed them out with the TIG. I put a couple of passes of TIG in, and then I did the last pass with overlay, and Joe has been so kind to spread some x-ray love on our plate here for us and we have brought these two images up and laid them side by side. The original shot is up here and we can see how our discontinuities are lined up in the toe of this weld or the toe of the root pass is where we suspected they were and when I ground down into it I was I kind of cut down into it and I was trying to move side to side and stay within the groove. I didn't do the best of job of of uh, lining those up with my grind marks and blending them back in. I used to be able to just leave a little button, but I haven't made a repair in a long time, so I'm learning, well, you know, I'm getting better. That's because you just throw those welds away. Yeah, cut them out and start over that's again. It. Yeah, that's we keep way. practicing. In any event, here is the second shot after the repair. So you can clearly see that we have clean weld also, we were taking care of a, a two-fold problem here. One of them was a, a viewer asked, how do you repair it undercut or underfill? And we went ahead and did that as well. And so we've lined these up. Your penetrometers are lined up. And you indicated when you brought these up that the road map, we've, we went ahead and left other voids in this weld that were left behind. Again, we were just concentrating on these big boys right here. That's right. So what do you think? We clean now? Looks much better. Yeah, the area you the area you worked on right in here, we've we've cleaned out all those voids. Now of course you can tell if you look here and here, these <coughs> two points are exactly the same, so you know we're not showing you two separate plates. That way you kinda know we're we're looking at the same information. Right in here is where you started cleaning everything out. And then of course we had this this area right here where it gave us a, a pointer to look at. And if you come straight down to here, that guy's gone and this area right through there where all those defects were before have been cleaned out. Okay, so, so much better, much better. Okay, again, it's advantageous to have a NDT program right here at our fingertips. We try to teach technique where we're avoiding this kind of stuff here. We want to pay attention in the in the while we're making the weld. We want to clean in between passes. Uh, when we get to a certain point in our skill level and we think we've got it, we come up and we we throw our best weld down, and Joe says. Ah, no, nah, I don't think so. We've got more work to do. In any event, uh, we really appreciate this. I hope this helps. Uh, I hope we all learned something here. Bob Moffat with Weld.com, Joe Klassen, non-destructive testing for Cowley College. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the videos.